Tegan Dunn and I am the Special Projects Manager for Brick Bay. My job this year with the Folly was to handle all the submissions that came in, get the judges together and then once the winning team was selected, it was kind of project managing the team and also communicating with all of the mentors. Overall, really, just to help the project come in on time and under budget, which we managed to do, which is great. Previously, there was a folly on that site called Tutakitaki, which is a beautiful curving red structure that operated almost like a palisade or a car site. So that was an earlier folly and uh, came down in the middle of 2020. And then we got the site ready for Genealogy of the Pacific. The folly is a, um, it's a French word and the meaning that's been sort of associated with it is uh, silliness and, um, and delight. And uh, this is one of the attractions of uh, follies. Uh, they're also often um, centred in picturesque landscapes and uh, they have no utilitarian purpose. And one of the wonderful things about the Brick Bay Folly is this, if to emphasise that um, it's taken down after two years and it becomes ephemeral. It's an idea and then it gets dismantled. Often follies internationally are for architects have arrived, but this was something for people who had just stepped out of architecture school or were still in it. I, look, I think the folly has a really important role uh, because it, it reflects things. It kind of distills and shrinks things. Uh, we see in there some ruminations about uh, building and enclosure and objects in a landscape. And uh, you, one doesn't have to build a whole building in order to do that. I think it's here because Brick Bay has a fantastic program of commissioning follies. Uh, because it, it seems to me that this has got a South Pacific character to it. And a particularly an Aotearoa character. And, and you might look at that and say, uh, well, where does that come from? Well, I think it, at the sort of larger scale, it comes from this idea of decoration and decoration formed out of uh, relatively repetitive geometric forms. I think well, as you come closer to it, you see that actually this is Pinus radiata that's been painted and bolted together and it has all the strengths and frailties of Pinus radiata. So, and, yet, and so in that way we understand it as being a New Zealand phenomenon. And so, you know, I think there's a real strength in that. There you go. This is our, our second year in terms of sponsorship for the Folly Sculpture and uh, we're very, very happy to be involved. This is quite an exciting one this year and uh, it's been complicated and as you can see behind me it's still under construction and we're, we're, we're hoping that it will be complete by the end of this week into next week. So I mean the whole thing about um, why it's great for the architecture students is because you know they learn a lot. It's like transferring from an architectural uh, three-dimensional drawing to building something on site is their huge learning curve and and certainly by all means they're learning a lot on this job with the um, the delicacy and the the tolerances and of what needs to happen in terms of the assembly uh, it's a great form um, it's it's a bit of a standout form it's got sort of great verticality it's got great presence on the site where it is as you drive into the uh, into the uh, the vineyard it's got great texture. I think it, you know, it, the light plays on it really nicely. So it, 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 it plays with the light. And, um, and the use of timber was good. They, they, they measured everything very carefully. So there was minimum wastage and, um, and, and they've painted it up in a color that, that is quite striking in terms of you know, how it sits in the landscape. So I think it's, it works really well. Lots of, lots of learnings for them when they go through this process. For, for the first time, they will be um, having to deal with logistics and practical issues that they've never done before. They will be stretched beyond their um, limits in terms of the effort that they'll have to put into this and then some. They will have to find out what they need to find out to make the folly, um, deliver the folly. They will be put under incredible time pressure with a fixed time. They'll be put under a fixed budget. The people who go through this uh, sort of boot camp, if you like, 
um, need to understand um, how to pull all those things together. Yep, this is the one. I believe it's the fact that it's our first built project. It really teaches you a lot of things that you will never, you rarely ever get to touch on in architecture school. And you really learn to refine the construction all the more and but think also thinking about how we would actually work, do it with our own two hands. Because a lot of things that we do in architecture, we know how it's all constructed, but we don't know how to actually assemble it together. I believe with that entire factor in mind, we had to look at construction in a different way to how we would see it in architecture school. Project name is Genealogy of Pacific. So we're trying to, because we have a lot of um, uh, same modules and rotating around, so it's kind of like a DNA. For the openings, we actually have a lot of options before. We're trying different shapes of openings and we imagine people come around it. And um, I think the, the most important thing is we wanted people to feel the atmosphere and really get sync into it. So as soon as the last cake layer was on there, and I just stepped back, uh, stepped back and had a look at the structure, I was just amazed because because um, like we've been doing a lot of renderings and we looked at the renderings and uh, we didn't quite think it was going to get built, but then after looking at it, it was really it was exactly the same with our render and it was it was in real life which was really cool. It was unreal and we, we felt really proud, mixed feelings because of all the challenges we went through. Because of especially for this year, we, there, were, there were a lot of difficulties at the start because of COVID and yeah, a lot of challenges. But at the end, we were super proud of the results. The, the narrative behind the structure really helps um, tie it down to the land, the, our ancestors of the land, and, and so on. So that's a really um, a great achievement. I, I think you know the students also put in their own cultural heritage, what they would expect in their own practice into the design. So from that standpoint, it's a really cool um, project, I guess. Um, the lockdown didn't help. You know, the deadline kept them being, you know, pushed back and pushed back. Uh, eventually there was a line drawn in the sand um, and, and then you know issues with uh, workshops closing down and um, you know end of year deadlines for you know just the institutions um, meant that the students had to really think hard and manage their time really well. No, it's a new <laughs> Can't we smile? But this is what it's about to me that you know if we're going to excel in New Zealand it's about a team, it's about having dreaming wonderful dreams, having creativity, but then surrounding that creativity with execution, performance and support. And this is a very small example of that. The university. Uh, what has... You know, I've always thought that we should be very grateful for uh, the Folly program and grateful to uh, Richard and Christine for, for starting it. Richard Didsbury, he's, he's actually a patron of architecture, landscape architecture and sculpture. And he has plied those uh, passions of his and those skills that bringing out in people uh, qualities that they didn't know exist and setting in extraordinary high standards. And he's done that through his business world um, and his development world. He's done that in community projects. And, and what's really nice is he's brought that um, extraordinary passion and generosity to bear on uh, Brick Bay itself. And so at Brick Bay they've developed this incredible picturesque landscape, they've developed this amazing sculpture trail, and then you put the folly on top of that, and they've created something that is absolutely extraordinary. So now that the folly has been open to the public, um, we invite everybody to come and have a look. We're open every day, see it in real life.